Let's say we're asked to solve x plus the square root of 4x plus 1 equals 5. We start by recognizing that we can only get rid of the radical once the radical is isolated. So the first thing we would need to do is start by subtracting the x over to the other side. This would give us the square root of 4x plus 1 equals 5 minus x. Once the radical is isolated, we recognize that this is a square root. So in order to get rid of it, we would need to square both sides. On the left-hand side, when we do so, we're just left with 4x plus 1. On the right-hand side, we can use one of the special product formulas to expand or foil to yield 25 minus 10x plus x squared. At this stage, we recognize that we have a quadratic equation indicated by the presence of the x squared term on the right-hand side. These equations can be solved by factoring by first setting the equation equal to 0. So we can take the terms on the left-hand side, the 4x and the 1, and subtract them over to the right. This gives us an equation 0 equals 25 minus 10x plus x squared, the original right-hand side, minus 4x minus 1. Combining like terms and just rearranging the terms gives us x squared minus 14x plus 24 equals 0. Now this equation can be solved by factoring. It's a quadratic. The leading coefficient is 1, so we can use the AC method. So factors of 24 that add up to negative 14 are negative 12 and negative 2. So those are the factors I use. At this stage, we can invoke the zero product property and state that either x minus 12 must equal 0, which indicates that x must equal 12, or x minus 2 must equal 0, which indicates that x will be 2. Both of these are potential solutions. We don't know that both of them will work or check in the original equation we were given. Since the original equation had, a, had an even root, a square root, we have to check our answers. So on this slide, I've written the equation twice. On the left-hand side, I'm going to plug in 12. So wherever I see an x, replacing it with 12 gives us 12 plus the square root of 4 times 12 plus 1. And again, we have a question mark above the equal sign because we don't know if 12 will give us a true statement when plugged into the original equation. So simplifying the left-hand side, 4 times 12 gives us 48. 48 plus 1 inside the radical gives us 49. Hopefully we remember that the square root of 49 is 7. And the left-hand side now simplifies to 12 plus 7, which is 19. Now at this stage, we recognize that 19 is not equal to 5, which means that plugging in 12 into the original equation results in a false statement. This means that 12 is not a solution to the original equation we were given. Now on the right-hand side, we can do the same checks, but with the other potential solution, 2. So replacing all the x's with 2 yields 2 plus the square root of 4 times 2 plus 1. Again, we're trying to determine if this simplifies to 5. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 on the inside of the radical simplifies to 9. And hopefully remember again that the square root of 9 is simply 3. 2 plus 3 on the left-hand side adds to give us 5, which indeed is equal to 5. So upon entering or replacing x with the number 2, we get a true statement. This indicates that x equals 2 is indeed a solution to this equation.